just minutes away from kickoff for the wild card playoff game between Atlanta and Green Bay. The weather at game time temperature is 30 degrees. It is a damp day. We are in storied Lambeau Field. When you're talking about football, this is what they mean. Good good back, metal, five yards after contact up to your shoulder. Do what we always do. Highest level. Ready? Burn. In a bog of hallowed Lambeau mud, the 1995 Atlanta Falcons slogged to an early wild card lead against the Packers. On the run, has been tapped open at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! With a toughness befitting the land of Lombardi, the two teams battled for their playoff lives. No! The Falcons had earned the right to be there. Just a week earlier, they forced their way into the postseason with a stunning upset of the mighty 49ers. On this day, they would score more points than any team ever had in a postseason game at Green Bay. But in the end, it was not enough. Still, the black cloud of defeat could not overshadow a season of tremendous accomplishment. A season in which the Falcons had learned to fight. They're going for it. Let's go. Let's go. They're going for it. Keep it in. Turn it in. Turn it in. Let's get on the In 95, the Falcons hit and got hit. But they always bounce back, looking, searching, determined to find a way to win. The Falcons claimed nine victories with an attack that featured four 1,000-yard players. An unprecedented achievement in NFL history. Hey, let's go! Let's go! go! Nineteen ninety-five was the year the Falcons would try anything to win. I love the Falcons, they're number one! I love them all the way! Oh. Can you see? In their 30th anniversary season, the Falcons kicked off an I-85 rivalry with Carolina. Take them right on down and put them in there, Jeffrey. No ordinary expansion team. The Panthers would press the Falcons in a tight contest. Way to stand in there, Jeffrey. Way to stand in there. The game would go to overtime, where the Falcon defense would find a way to win. Left to right, right, play fake, he's under pressure. Archambeau breaks the ball loose and falls on it at the 20. Oh, baby, what a play by Lester Archambeau. From there, it was up to the Falcons' new secret weapon. Tied at 20 in overtime. Horton Anderson, here's the snap, ball is down. Kick is up and good! Welcome to Atlanta, Morton. 1995 was the beginning of a beautiful friendship for Morton Anderson and the Falcons. With Harper LaBelle snapping and Dan Straczynski holding, Anderson banged out an NFL record eight field goals of over 50 yards. And as for kickoffs, well, here we go. Oh, big man. He's not taking it out. Anderson led the league in touchbacks, frustrated returners, and balls up the tunnel. From the land of Hamlet came another classic, a kicking classic that ranks as one of the greatest seasons by a kicker ever. The Great Dane! What a year he has had for the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, it's just mind-boggling. The strength of Anderson's foot would be in need in week three against his former team, as would be the power of Ironhead Hayward as the birds rallied in the fourth quarter. 
needing a two-pointer to tie, the Falcons went to the NFL's all-time leader in that category, Terrence Mathis. In overtime, the way to win was on the right arm of Jeff George. From there, Morton Anderson would have his revenge. You'll hear it. Here's the snap. The ball's down. Kick is up. And it's perfect. The dagger goes into the heart of the Saints from the man they wanted to take a pay cut. Anderson would be voted to the Pro Bowl for his stellar season, as would another Falcon. You gotta love it. Meet middle linebacker Jesse Tuggle. Here we go, here we go. Start fast today. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Woo! All we gotta do is play physical, man. You know, start from the beginning. Roll call at the football. George behind center, Roman Fortin. Short drop, quick toss, corner of the end zone, touchdown! Burn even! Yeah! Yeah! There you go! That's what we need! Let's go, D. Offense did that for us, do ours. Hey, on three, no big play. One, two, three, no big play! <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'll lay the wood to him every time. Every time. But with the Jets threatening late, it was Tuggle's teammate Ken Tippins who turned in the big play. Not a bunch of them. Okay, go line tight. Ready? Tight, tight. Anderson and Murrell in the backfield. Boomer Esiason's gonna throw it into the end zone. It's picked up by Ken Tippins. Oh, baby. Tuggle led by example in 95, topping the team in tackles for the seventh straight season and intercepting three passes, one for a touchdown. By Jesse Tuggle, and Tuggle is going to score. Touchdown, Atlanta. On the defensive line, Chuck Smith battled ball carriers and injuries on his way to five and a half sacks. From veteran Clay Matthews to rookie Devin Bush, the defense was a hustling crew that kept the Falcons in games late. Winning is an attitude, and the Falcons will be meaner and leaner in 96, thanks to the addition of linebacker Cornelius Bennett. For the first time in the 76-year history of the NFL, a single offense produced four 1,000-yard players. The visiting Patriots received a first-hand look as the Falcons ran their record to an impressive 4-1. In 95, Ironhead Hayward set a personal best by rushing for over a thousand yards. He also added a new entry to the defensive list of nevers. Never arm tackle, never let your man get behind you, and never get in front of Ironhead Hayward. Even his own teammates had to be on guard. Eric Metcalf was a rare gem, a player who could do it all. 
he returned punts with his usual flair. He also ran the football with his trademark swiftness. The new wrinkle was receiving. Metcalf led the team with 104 receptions on his way to over 1,100 yards. Terrence Mathis got his 1,000 yards the hard way, over the middle. Unafraid to take a shot, he led the team in touchdown receptions despite missing two games. Anything Mathis couldn't hold, Bird Emanuel was there to scoop up. In 95, the former college quarterback blossomed into a big time pro receiver, snagging 74 balls. Distributing the ball to the 4,000 yard players was quarterback Jeff George who displayed a newfound touch in 95. In his second year at the helm, he showed a firm grasp of the four wide receiver offense, standing in the pocket, making multiple reads, then gunning at home. For the second straight season, George also started every game. With instruments like the 4,000-yard players and a director like Jeff George, June Jones' offense played smooth and clean as a big band. Jeffrey, just a little better tempo. Just a little better tempo. One, two, three. You okay on that? Next play, we'll throw the screen to you, okay? Score, will you? Eric Metcalf, the man who came in the offseason as a free agent from Cleveland. The nose. The nose goes this way, go back door. Oh, the spread formation. It's a draw play. Iron hit the five. Driving, driving, driving. Touchdown! I see Bert running right by that guy right now. Touch it right up the middle of the field. Has running room. Bert Emanuel! Don't clip him. Don't clip him. Oh, bull crap. We got Son of a fuck. Come on! Eliminate the penalties! The guy who's blocking, grab him around here. He had his arm around here. He's picked up from trying to spit out the play. Okay. Usually you guys see him right. About 20% of the time. The offense was off and running, ranked 10th in the league. Opponents resorted to all kinds of tricks to throw them off rhythm. But the beat filling the Georgia Dome could not be denied as the fans boogied their way to a 7-1 home record, second best in the NFL. Opposite right, Y on, 33 belly. This is going to be interesting here. Yep, George under pressure. That's going to throw deep. What a play by Jeff George. Eric Metcalf just caught a bullet with his hand. The diving grab by Jordan. Come on, old boy. Jeff George gives it to Jamal Anderson, runs to the left side and drives and drives and drives. Touchdown. In this offense, everyone has a part to play, and no one gets left out. This is going to be a choice post for a touchdown right here. Jeff George backpedals right across the middle. It is complete to the 38, and breaking tackles is Rollo Preston. Whoa, baby! He's now at the 25, at the 20, got a block at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Atlanta! You ain't missed one of those in a hundred years. I know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
They don't have to like us, but they will respect us. That's right. They will respect us. The five and two Buccaneers learn to respect the speed of Eric Metcalf the hard way. Looking right, looking right, waiting, waiting, over the middle. Wide open is Metcalf. Who's going to catch it? Metcalf, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Eric Metcalf! Hey, now step it up a little bit. Hey! Reach down in there. We're still not playing as good as we can play, damn it. Let's get it going here. Get it, baby. Yeah! Jeff George has a lot of time. Throws right into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta! Finding a way to win on the road is crucial to a team's playoff hopes. And Bert Emanuel's two TD grabs help the Falcons capture a valuable road win. Back in the Dome, they had to try to cage a lion. The great Barry Sanders gained just 44 yards on the Blackbird defense all day. The aggressive defense also broke the game open. This is second down to Mitchell. Picked up by Old Montgomery at the 35. Can anybody catch it? 40, 35, 30. It's a foot race. 20. Kiss him. Goodbye. With Jeff George passing for over 350 yards against the Rams, the Falcons found a new way to win, a blowout. Terrence Mathis latched on to three touchdown passes as the Falcons cruised to seven and four, but smiles weren't in order just yet. The Falcons would win only one of their next four games, a crucial rematch against the Saints. Morton Anderson again vexed his old team, setting a single game NFL record by nailing three field goals from beyond 50 yards. The great game with field goals of 51, 55, and 55 today. Why were we worried? But with under a minute to play, the Saints were on the Falcon nine-yard line, poised to steal victory. The pocket into the end zone. It's picked off in the end zone. It's Jesse Tuggle. The Falcons escape with a needed win. But the team that had found a way all season suddenly lost its way, dropping three of four games late in the year to play off hungry opponents. The Falcons were now eight and seven. Their only hope of reaching the playoff was to knock off the powerful 49er team in the Christmas Eve showdown. Someplace in my bag, there's one more win for the Falcons. I've been digging and scratching for it. I hadn't found it yet, but I hadn't given up looking for it. The 49ers jumped to a lead on two easy drives to open the game. The Falcons rallied on a George to Metcalf touchdown pass. But all seemed lost when George was knocked from the game with an injury shortly after. He did not go gentle into that good night. Sideline and pointing toward Jim Harris. Well, I don't think Jeff is going to win that one, but what he is winning right now, the fans who see that you know, Jeff George has got some uh, emotion there. I like his reaction. The guy wants to win. Fans are beginning to figure that out. Just before halftime, the momentum of the game turned on the foot of Morton Anderson as he banged the fourth longest field goal in NFL history. Kick is up and it's got the leg. It's good! 59 yards! You have to believe that the Falcons are going to go into halftime here believing they have a chance to win this game and get into the playoffs. In the second half, those chances would rest squarely on the shoulders of backup quarterback Bobby Abair. Abair short drop, throws quickly. In the end zone, touchdown! Terrence Mathis! This is the loudest I've heard this crowd. You're beautiful people, baby! You're beautiful 
people are doing a great job. When well, you guys keep fighting out there, you understand? We got these suckers on the road. You guys keep battling. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. In the fourth quarter, the Niners were forced to settle for a field goal when Jesse Tuggle sacked Steve Young on a pivotal third down, giving the Falcons one last chance to drive the field. A drive on which they would face a do or die fourth down. It's very simple. 2 19 to go. Down by five. Got time to score. Fourth and five for Atlanta. This is it. The season down to this. A bear throwing right side. Complete to that catch at the 40. Cuts to the middle and down to the 38 yard line of the 49ers. Well, keep the faith that those of you who did, the season isn't over yet. The Falcons had played hard, but there comes a time when playing hard is no longer enough. There comes a time when the long hours of preparation and sacrifice, if they are worth it, must assume the form of victory. Bear rolls left, steps right into the pocket, is still holding it, now rolls out of the pocket, now throwing it. Has a man, Terrence Mathis, Terrence Mathis at the 10, Terrence Mathis sprinting for the corner at the five. Father, we thank you for all the frustrations that you put us through because I knew it was going to make us stronger. Thank you for all these things. We thank you for this win. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen! What a great job, Terrence Mathis. Terrence Mathis, what an effort. And the whole defense, what a great job. Guys, what a great effort. You know, I knew one thing. And I kept telling myself this, and all the frustrations, I knew something good was going to happen to this football team. And I'll tell you what, guys, what a great win. What a great win for everybody in this room, our organization, everything. And guess what? It ain't over now. We found something today. We found something today. In 1995, the Atlanta Falcons found a way to win. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave.